now available from National Geographic Home Video. In the dead of winter, the Arctic is a dark and alien ocean. Even with the return of summer's eternal sun and the awakening of this frozen world, it remains one of the harshest places on Earth. Sometimes creatures must navigate a deadly course between giant shifting blocks of ice. Journey with us and explore the northern reaches of our planet in National Geographic's Arctic Kingdom, Life at the Edge. When the sun scorches the earth and the river runs dry, how can these creatures survive? In dwindling pools of water, crocodiles and hippos live side by side in mysterious harmony. It's a wild and brutal world where predators and prey coexist in a dangerous balance. And getting a drink can be a deadly game of chance. Who will be left alive when the circle of life is renewed again? National Geographic invites you to join the last feast of the crocodiles. And now, our feature presentation. Africa, as it once was. Here in the heart of the great Kalahari Desert lies a remarkable oasis. An immense delta called the Okavango. It's a sanctuary for a natural world unchanged in many ways since the dawn of humanity. Okavango is a place like nowhere else in Africa. A rich tapestry of wildlife woven together by the life-giving waters of this vast Eden. This is a world of tranquil beauty, but even so, the eternal struggle for survival goes on continually. Here too, the rules of the hunt are ever-changing, subject to the capricious ebb and flow of the Okavanga's floodwaters. Some prey animals must be taken quickly before they reach deep water. Nowhere is truly safe. Wild dogs of Africa are superb predators, but their hunting skills are rigorously challenged during times of flood by species of antelope, especially adapted to the wetlands. Water defines this remarkable place, and it often decides who will succeed, and who will fail, who will survive, and who will perish. Here in Africa's great waterland, the Okavango. Thank you. 
The heart of the Okavango is a permanent swamp, a maze of lagoons and channels coursing through reeds and grasses and blankets of water lilies. Filtered by vegetation and sand, these pure waters become crystal clear. The existence of a watery refuge here in the midst of one of the world's great deserts is the result of a unique interplay between climate and geology. Its source is the Okavango River, one of the longest in southern Africa. On reaching Botswana, it meanders between two geological faults. Then the river spills out onto a vast floodplain. It divides into a network of channels and wetlands, creating one of the largest inland deltas in the world. The delta can be seen from space, spreading like a giant hand across the face of southern Africa. It's born of summer rains a thousand miles to the north in the highlands of Angola. Fed by these rains, the Okavango River slowly winds through a long panhandle before entering the permanent swamp. There it is further slowed by flat terrain and dense vegetation. Over the next few months, the level of the permanent swamp rises almost imperceptibly. When the new water finally reaches the floodplain, it arrives at the height of the dry season. This is the miracle of the Okavango. The Delta's unique environment begins in the Panhandle, where the river meanders for some 60 miles. Thousands of carmine bee-eaters migrate here to nest in the steep, sandy banks. These strikingly beautiful birds primarily live on honeybees and other flying insects caught on the wing. They lay their eggs when the water is low, in tunnels usually five to six feet long. This is also the main breeding ground of one of the Okavango's more sinister creatures. Baby crocodiles hatch as the river is rising. It will provide them a convenient means of transport. Many of the young crocs will drift with the current southeast into the heart of the Okavango Delta. This permanent swamp is a water wilderness of swamp grasses, ferns, and lilies. This tangled world seems half liquid, half vegetation, and it never dries. Floodwaters, in years of abundant rain, can double the area of the swamp to some 5,000 square miles. Elephants are among the few large mammals that venture into the heart of the permanent swamp. They browse on the foliage while the young frolic in the Okavango shallows. This is a sanctuary for the shy and elusive Sitatunga, a water-loving antelope that seldom ventures outside the permanent swamp. And this is the only place in Africa where the slady egret can be found in numbers. It's one of the rarest herons in the world. The inner swamp is a nesting haven for a rich variety of water birds. And there are huge colonies. 
Here, the yellow-billed stork can raise their hatchlings in isolated safety. Other water birds are drawn to the swamp simply to hunt and feed. This saddlebill haunts the shallows, seeking fish and frogs. The marabou storks nest by the thousands here, in low-spreading fig trees. Stalking the waterways, the marabou can sometimes bring a quick end to a young crocodile's journey. After a long night of grazing, hippos spend the day digesting and wallowing. A single hippo may transform 150 pounds of vegetation into dung, which in turn enriches the water and plant life. En route to favored grasslands, the hippos trample pathways throughout the delta creating channels in the waterways. Now is the season when floodwaters from the Okavango River are slowly filling the permanent swamp. But here on the floodplains, the water left from last year's flood is quickly evaporating. Lechwe graze in the shallows. They feed on grasses that sprout along the edge of the receding waters. A pack of wild dogs appears. These are the painted wolves of Africa. The dogs are skilled tacticians, but the Okavango poses a special challenge. Lechwe always race for the safety of water when threatened. Lechwe have developed elongated hooves that allow them to race through the shallows. The dogs are often no match for them. As the Lechwe escape into deep water, the dogs choose to wait and watch. The dog's instinct is confirmed. A crocodile is lurking nearby. But the Lechwe would rather take their chances with a crocodile than face certain death with the dogs. Throughout the Okavango, palm trees dot the landscape. They provide shade and shelter and a plentiful supply of fruit. Baboons scale the heights 
to feast in these vegetable ivory palms. But they're not the only ones with a craving. As night falls, the leftover palm fruits are not forgotten. The African porcupine loves them too. With their strong, sharp incisors, the porcupine tears into the fibrous flesh, leaving the hard inner seed to become, perhaps, a future palm tree. The rare and endangered pangolin has to pass on the fruit. They are among the few mammals in the world without teeth. Instead, this walking artichoke survives by raiding ant and termite colonies. When a pangolin comes upon a termite mound, it uses powerful claws to tear into the rock-hard mud. Within is a complex network of corridors and chambers filled with ghostly white insects that shun daylight. In a typical mound, there are millions of termites, and using its sticky tongue, the pangolin will feast on vast numbers of them. Termite mounds provide hiding places for both predator and prey. Ideal jackal dens and observation posts for leopards. Many of the mounds become the foundation for full-grown islands. A sweeping view of the Okavango reveals them scattered over a wide band between the permanent swamp and the outer floodplain. In this season, all the big game animals of the delta converge on the receding waters. Beyond the swamp and the islands, the vast floodplains still are drying out. Buffalo rumble far and wide in search of water. With all the noise and dust, it almost seems that war has broken out in the Okavango. It is the onset of the dry season, the African winter. For these wild dogs, it is the time for rearing pups. Expectant females clean out abandoned burrows where they can give birth in safety. The wild dogs of Africa are a distinct species, only distantly related to domesticated dogs. Contagious diseases and hunting by man have threatened them with extinction. But here in the heart of the Okavango, they're free to hunt and reproduce in relative safety. When the females are about to give birth, there's little for the pack to do but wait. Hooded vultures keep them company. <laughs> 
Only a few months ago, there was water here. Now, there are plains of grass, dried to a golden brown. During the dry season, the open plains of the Okavangle favor animals built for speed. These cheetahs have only to lie in wait, as their prey appear in numbers. cheetah is the fastest cat on earth, and it will sometimes walk boldly up to its prey until it's within sprinting range. The prey finds camouflage in the amber fields of grass, but one false move can betray the reed buck. As the victim is hauled into the shade, silent witnesses pass by the scene. In the dry season, herds of giraffes seek the last remaining water in the floodplains. Back in the den of the wild dogs, there is much excitement. Three weeks after birth, the pups are finally emerging into daylight. Up until now, the mothers have not allowed other dogs near their burrows. But now everyone joins in, welcoming the new arrivals. In this pack, while several females have given birth, only the dominant female assumes the role of mother. She even nurses the pups of the other females. Still, the dominant female has trouble keeping an eye on all 21 new arrivals. One of the other females, perhaps a new mother herself, kidnaps a pup. She and a cohort carry it back towards another burrow. But it is a short-lived venture, as the dominant female quickly drives them off. She reclaims the pup as her own.
Millions of birds move in unison like a great school of fish engulfing the air. Swirling flocks of quillias converge on the diminishing water holes to quench their thirst. The Okavango is now in the midst of a long, dry winter. All across the floodplains, dried out game trails radiate from the shrinking water holes. Wildlife congregate around the few oases. Here they'll wait out the dry season until the annual flood arrives, which is still working its way ever so slowly out of the permanent swamp. Small groups of buffalo from across the plains now mass together into herds of thousands. Water is their most critical need. But the wild dogs obtain much of their water needs from the flesh of their prey. The pups even seem to enjoy the dry weather as they frolic in the winter sun. playing it hunting. Assuming the stance for stalking, this pump launches a mock attack on the others. Out on the hunt, the adult dogs survey a herd of lechwe grazing on the plains. Without water nearby, these lechwe are very vulnerable. For this is the season of the wild dog. Hunting in packs up to 20 or more, wild dogs are very successful hunters. They have incredible stamina and blazing speed, at times second only to the cheetah. in the jaws of predators. The victim's fate is sealed. The lechwe ceases its struggling and appears to go into deep shock.
Within a few minutes, the prey is dismembered. The dogs gorge themselves to fill their bellies because the pups and their guardians are awaiting them. The pack returns from the hunt. It's a time of high excitement and celebration. A guardian receives a piece of the kill, regurgitated by one of the hunters. The pups clamor to receive their share. They too are fed regurgitated meat. The pups are becoming frisky and aggressive, launching surprise attacks on their constant companions, the vultures. Nearby are three male lions, a formidable coalition that have roamed this area for years. A lioness, part of a pride of females, awaits with anticipation for one of the males. In the surrounding vegetation, the others mark the group's territory. In a bizarre-looking expression called flamen, the male lion tests the air for the scent that indicates the female is in heat. Lions have been known to copulate up to 80 times a day, but the duration is brief, from a minute to only six seconds. This group of lions monopolizes several prides of females in their territory, but still find ample time to rest. The long, dry winter seems endless. Day after day, a remorseless sun arcs through a cloudless sky. It warms the air after cool, even bitter cold nights. This year's floodwaters are slow in coming. Vital pools and water holes have shrunk to mere puddles. Catfish are now concentrated in the ooze. Fish eagles swoop down to gorge on the fish. They compete among themselves, even in the midst of plenty. The ponds are becoming crowded. Large crocodiles have abandoned them and the constant presence of buffalo and other animals now force the smaller crocs to move on as well. Every creature vies for its place in the comforting ooze. Young crocs seek new hiding places in the shade of reeds. There they will lie dormant until the floodwaters return. Rolling in the mud, the buffalo crushes a pool of catfish, all the better for the marabou, who now has only to pluck out the lifeless prey.
For the fish, disaster. For the birds, a season of plenty. Once again, water, or the lack of it, determines who will survive in the Okavango. The hippo pools are now more hippo than pool. In the dry, innovating air, they wallow in the last of the cooling mud. Catfish try to crawl away in search of other pools. It's a futile effort, and many pools are already a grisly mass of dying fish. All over the plains, there is a desperate need for water. Then a rare and welcome sound at the height of the dry season. In a cruel twist of fate, this storm brings not rain, but fire. Lightning has set off the dry grass, and in moments the floodplains are a swirling inferno. desperately tries to outrun the flames. Smaller creatures and insects will be consumed by the fire in seconds. The wildfire races across the Okavango, setting palm and papyrus ablaze. Burning tapers carried by the wind spread the fire everywhere. The wild dogs know from experience not to run in panic. The big game animals escape to the center's large islands. There, the vegetation is sparse, and there is little to feed the killing flames. Fire rages for days. It marches in a deadly procession north towards the permanent swamp. Rivers and channels provide only temporary barriers. The towering flames, whipped by the wind, leap across the waterways and into the swamp itself. The 
the fire is over. It has scorched thousands of acres of floodplain and has stripped great areas of the permanent swamp of its vegetation. All that remains is a charred landscape, seemingly devoid of life. Fire can be good for the delta, clearing away dead vegetation and prompting the growth of new grass. But some fear that too many man-made fires could do irreversible damage to the Okavango. The pangolin is a survivor having found refuge in an underground burrow. The larger animals have also escaped the flames, only to face an even more arid and harsh environment than before. But now, at last, the Okavango works its greatest magic as the new floodwaters finally arrive. In surreal counterpoint, trickles of water create tendrils of dust as they advance across the plains. They slowly percolate through the ashes, restoring life to the charred land. Only inches deep in places, the new flood spreads out across the land. Some creatures that survived the fire now perish in the rising waters. The waters of the Okavango have come a thousand miles from the mountains of Angola. They now end their journey on the vast floodplains of the Kalahari. The water will slowly refill the dry channels and dusty lagoons. It also courses through old hippo paths, allowing many predators to infiltrate the plains. Myriads of fish migrate with the new water to feed on the rich supply of insects it displaces. Not far behind are young crocodiles. Water birds now search the edge of the flood, finding a rich concentration of prey. Pelicans welcome the season of plenty, eagerly scooping up newly arrived catfish.
hippos, it's time at last to gather and bathe in deep water. All the animals are now forced to cross the flooded areas. Water is once again an element to contend with. The wild dogs must negotiate a maze of waterways infiltrated by stealthy crocodiles. They're aware that for every croc they see, Others may lurk unseen. Hunting and escaping now depend on crossing ever-deepening channels. Cheetahs are creatures of the drier savanna, but those that live in the Okavango must cross the waters to hunt. They do so after much hesitation and then with prudent speed. After running down their prey, cheetahs go for the throat. Then they patiently wait while life ebbs slowly from their victim. Nightfall and spring rains have stirred a singular event, as winged termites called alates take flight before mating underground. The puff adder too responds to the spell of the season. Now is its time to bear young. With the rain, the Okavango glitters with moisture and the plains turn a vivid green.
The wild dog pups have been playing at hunting for weeks. They're now old enough to witness the real thing. They join the pack, now ranging far and wide in search of prey. At every water crossing, the adults are cautious, but the pups will learn only gradually about the enemy the water hides. And when the chase begins in earnest, the pups must be left behind. In the excitement and confusion comes a moment of extreme danger. Urged on by the adults, the pups must cross to safety. Once more, ancient adversaries have met and played out their predestined roles. The drama of the wild favors neither predator nor prey. The survival of all is ensured in the natural world which gives no creature an absolute advantage. All belong and have their proper place in the great waterland called the Okavango.
We hope you have enjoyed this presentation from the National Geographic Video Library.